In this tutorial, we learn how to solve a typical exam type question involving the factor theorem for polynomials. And we're going to work through two examples. The first is the one we see here. We're given x minus 1 is a factor of the polynomial f of x, which equals to x cubed plus px squared minus x minus 4. And we are asked to find the value of p. That's the coefficient multiplying the x squared here. Okay, so let's dive right in. I'll just move the question to the side, like so. Now, the important thing to realize here is that since we're told that x minus 1 is a factor of this polynomial, the factor theorem lets us state that 1 must be a 0 of that polynomial. In other words, we can go right ahead and write f of 1 must equal to 0. And if we replace every x we see inside f of x by 1, we obtain the following f of 1 equals to 1 cubed plus p times 1 squared minus 1 minus 4. That's f of 1 equals to 1 cubed, which is just 1, plus p times 1 squared, so that's plus p times 1, minus 1 minus 4. Now, gathering all the like terms, we find f of 1 must equal to p minus 4. But as we said, the factor theorem tells us that f of 1 must equal to 0. So, p minus 4 must equal to 0. We can therefore write p minus 4 equals to 0, which leads to p equals to 4. And that's the answer. We've just found the value of the coefficient p. And if needs be, we can go ahead and rewrite the polynomial as f of x equals to x to the power of 3 plus 4x squared minus x minus 4. Let's look at the next example. In this example, we're told that x plus 2 is a factor of the polynomial f of x, which equals to 3x cubed plus 3x squared plus px minus 18. And once more, we're asked to find the value of p, where p is the x to the power of 1 coefficient. Once more, I'll move the question to the side, like so. And now we can get started. The reasoning here is identical to what we've just seen. We're told that x plus 2 is a factor of this polynomial. The factor theorem therefore allows us to state that negative 2 must be one of this polynomial's zeros. If you're unsure of why it's negative 2 and not just 2, the trick is to always look at the operation between the x and the number as a subtraction. In other words, we need to think of x plus 2 as x minus negative 2. And that really highlights that we're dealing with negative 2 here. So we can write f of negative 2 must equal to 0. But replacing x by negative 2 inside our polynomial leads to the following. We have f of negative 2 equals to 3 times negative 2 cubed plus 3 times negative 2 squared plus p times negative 2 minus 18. That leads to f of negative 2 equals to 3 times negative 2 cubed, and negative 2 cubed is negative 8, plus 3 times negative 2 squared, which is just 4, plus p times negative 2, so that's negative 2 times p, minus 18. We carry on. We obtain f of negative 2 equals to 3 times negative 8, which is negative 24, plus 3 times 4, which is 12, minus 2p, minus 18. Now simplifying as much as possible, we find f of negative 2 equals to negative 30 minus 2p. But just as before, we know from the factor theorem that f of negative 2 must equal to 0. And since f of negative 2 is also equal to negative 30 minus 2p, we can go ahead and state that negative 30 minus 2p must equal to 0. That leads us to negative 30 equals to 2p, and we quickly see that p must equal to negative 15. And we're done. We've just found the value of p. And just as before, if needs be, we can go ahead and rewrite our polynomial function as f of x equals to 3x to the power of 3 plus 3x squared minus 15x minus 18. And there we have it. That's how we can solve one of the common exam type questions involving the factor theorem. And that's it for this tutorial.